Hey, hey, it's CDA and welcome to another update on Dyson Sphere program. The combat update called Rise of the Dark Fork just came out and here's a quick overview of everything that's included. The most important part of this update includes the enemy forces that will now be haunting you throughout the universe if you turn them on. Now, if you don't want any enemies in your game, just click this check mark and you will still have all the other benefits, but no enemies to worry about. For those of you that are looking for a bit more customized experience, you can pretty much set the Dark Fog to behave in whichever way you want. By default, they will look at the power that your factory is consuming, and the more power you are consuming, the more often you will be attacked. You scale this up and down, that means you get more or less attacks. The combat threat factor actually looks at how much you are attacking them. So the more combat you do, the more threat you will be uh, to the Dark Fog, and again, the more they will attack you. And the combat experience factor is actually determining how fast they level up. They will get increasingly stronger the more battle you do with them. And this factor affects exactly that. Now on top of that you can set them to be more or less aggressive. You can even set them all the way to dummy. That means that they will be there. They just won't do anything. They won't actually even attack you back. Even if you attack them. Setting them to passive means that they will actually attack you if you attack them. But otherwise they will leave you alone. And then of course you can go all the way up to rampage. Which I guess kind of speaks for itself. Don't do that unless you're really into doing some combat. Now all the other modes basically say something about how much of a threat they will be initially. How fast they will grow. How many bases there will be. How many units there are. Etc. Etc. Um, skill this up at your own peril. When you first start out you'll find a base like this on your home planet already. This is defended by all these tiny little robots defending it. It won't actually do much initially and you will land on the opposite side of the planet in terms of where you start out to build your own base. Um, but of course every now and then as soon as you start consuming any power, basically as soon as you start building your factory, periodically they will send out a wave that you will need to defend your base against. When the waves comes is actually really predictable because you can look at this threat meter over here. Again, that's based on your power consumption, how fast this goes up. And as soon as this completely fills up, the bases will send out a wave of attackers. Now, the direction of that attack is usually fairly predictable. They will tend to go for the closest facility that you have compared to where they're coming from. So you should be able to set up a defense against that pretty easily. The second line is the Space Dark Fog Hive. So this is the... the um, space version of the bases that the enemy has that initially won't do anything but as you grow f further and further and you become stronger and stronger this will also start to go up slowly and of course as, as soon as this fills out you'll actually get an attack from outer space there are a lot of new buildings in this particular update and among which are of course defense turrets so you can leave your base defended while you do something else now these these turrets actually scale up in size and damage by themselves as well but you can actually feed them different types of ammunition and scale up that ammunition improve the ammunition so that you start doing more and more damage with the turrets that you already have However, it's not just about destroying your enemy, but there's also some utility buildings in there as well. A couple of them are combat related. So for example, you have the Battlefield Analysis building that actually allows you to rebuild buildings that have been destroyed by the enemy automatically. So it will dispatch these uh, construction bots, just like the ones you have on yourself, and draw off on the buildings that you put in there to, in order to actually be able to uh, rebuild the buildings that might be destroyed. It also comes with a personal defense army so you can actually dispatch your own fleet in order to fight off the enemies. So this is a very interesting building that basically makes sure that your base stays intact even if it gets destroyed while you leave. Uh, on top of that we have the signal tower which actually allows you to draw your enemy to you so you know exactly where they're going to be attacking and they will um, walk right into your trap. And last but not least we have the planetary shield. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It will actually put up a huge shield around your planet and have the enemy try to fight through that. For those of you that aren't really into the combat thing but you do want to see some new things in your game, well I have good news for you because you actually get a new smelter, a new assembler and a new matrix lab available for the uh, end game. These things produce stuff at an incredibly fast rate so if you want to kind of push your PC to the max and do even more production than you were already doing, then these buildings are there for you. Now of course all of this means that there have been a huge amount of additions to the technology tree as you can see. Uh, if you know what the previous tree looked like. It was about one third smaller than it looks like now. Uh, what I really like about this particular update is that a lot of these things unlock really really early on. So you can immediately start playing with the new content. You don't have to go through hours and hours of 
setting up the base that you, that you might have already done a few dozen times. But it also continues down all the way to the end game with things like uh, improved uh, power rods and things like that all the way near the end. What I also really like is that there have been a huge amount of new updates to the upgrades. Um, of course there's the uh, typical things like upgrading your damage, upgrading your defense, upgrading the amount of um, units that you're able to spawn. Um, all in all, this is pretty straightforward and it really ties into the combat update, but it also means that you will never find yourself kind of uh, looking around, feeling like, okay, I've been spending a lot of time on building my base, but now I'm kind of not doing anything with my science. You'll pretty much always have something to upgrade uh, while you're building or working on some other thing. There have been a couple of other smaller um, sneaky upgrades to the game as well. For example, you're now able to build your wind turbines on the water. Now you might be wondering, is that important? Yes, it is, because you normally you get into a lot of space issues on your starting planet. And being able to build these wind turbines in areas that you might not be able to utilize anyway, just makes things a lot easier. You will need to actually research steel in order to unlock this. But once you do, you can go nuts and build um, entire wind farms on your oceans. Among these other smaller changes are a couple of changes to recipes. Pretty much anything that flies will now require engines. And of course engines is a new type of thing that you need to build. So you might have to change up some of your blueprints if you use those. Or at least set up some new production lines in order to facilitate the building of things that you might have otherwise be building in a different way. Now if, even if you play without the dark fog, these changes still apply to your game as well. So yeah. Nothing, no way around it. If you start a new game, these changes will be in your game. Something to note, by the way, is that if you have an existing save game, you should be still able to play those, so based on the uh, previous content, without having to adapt to things like combat or new um, types of recipes. Now, whether or not you are a huge fan of having combat in your game, I would suggest you try it out anyway, because honestly, I have to say it's been implemented in a very balanced way. It's nothing short from amazing how they've done this. If you play on the default settings, then you definitely need to take combat into consideration, defend your base, do things like that. Um, but at the same time, it's not that threatening that you're constantly stressed out, um, looking around where the enemy is coming from, anything like that. Again, you do need to take it into consideration, but it doesn't interrupt the flow of the game too much compared to how it would normally work. I recently started a new playthrough, so if you think like you need some help in the initial early game or you're a little bit threatened by the combat, by all means join in and let's have some fun together. There's a link down below to that series. If you want to subscribe to the channel to get some early access to my videos, you can do that as well. And in general, I would say don't be too afraid uh, of jumping into this new content and trying it out. It's a really balanced experience if you play on the default settings. Uh, again, I didn't expect anything else. From these developers but it's a, a pretty good job that they did i think in getting it right the first time so again i highly encourage you to just jump in and explore all the new things that have come with this update for now i hope you enjoyed this overview and i hope to catch you in the next one